Five years have passed since the dark figure moved among the citizens of Blackstone, distributing the gifts that brought madness and death. Each month had brought a new gift and a new tragedy. A doll, a woman's locket, then a cigarette lighter, a handkerchief, and an old-fashioned stereoscope. The public never learned the identity of the dark figure, but somehow everyone knew the old asylum was at the center of the tragedies. People got on with their lives. Oliver Metcalf, son of the last asylum keeper, married Rebecca Morrison. A year later, they had a son, who has since remained blissfully ignorant of the evil that has plagued his family. Now, the State Historical Society has renovated the asylum and plans to open it as a museum of psychiatric history. Malcolm Metcalf, the last superintendent of the asylum, was my father. The last time the old building was disturbed, my memories of him came alive and I became the dark figure. This time, I pray to God he will leave me and my family in peace. Welcome back, Oliver. It's been almost five years. Hello, Father. What do you want? Look around, Oliver. Do you know where you are? It's the old asylum, but it doesn't look like this anymore. It's all been changed. You disobeyed me, Oliver. You never finished the task I set out for you. I did more than I should have. Nonsense. Your task was simple. You were to seek revenge on the families. You've killed enough people, Father. Can't you leave me alone? No. First, they took the asylum from me. Now they plan to turn it into a museum. They must be punished, Oliver, starting with that woman you married. You should know better than that. I won't do it. The son disobeys the father, eh? Perhaps I'll have better luck with your son. Joshua. Who are you? Grandfather Malcolm. I thought you were dead. Oh, 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 no. Come along with me, Joshua. I know some good games we can play. Okay. You see, Oliver, I mean to have my revenge. Perhaps you will see things my way before the night is through. I'm sure young Joshua will. Getting OBS to pick this game up was a pain, but also it's like all the other games I tend to play, for some reason I can't get the full game on my like screen. So you guys can see at the top the menu here, but I can't see this. And instead of seeing it, um, my window, like over here, th there's a black like spot here like a black line here and then like a black line under here and i can't fix it so i will have to be i think i did this for one of the other older games as well i will have to be looking at my obs preview to see the buttons up here but that's it's not a problem as long as like i know saves here um yeah so anyway let me restart because i was testing Dad? I'm scared, Daddy. Don't worry, Josh. I'm coming. I was with Grandpa, but then something happened. Now I'm all alone. It'll be okay, Josh. I'm coming to get you. Why is the main protagonist's voice so flat? Like, even the father had this, like, like a, like a decent voice acting, like, attempt. Okay, so this game actually gives you the option to pick between panning and then just like skipping. Um, and I think the panning is really cool, but I think it's gonna make me sick. So I just wanted to have it enabled. They did a nice job with that. At the start, just so that you could see like that it is an option and it actually I think looks pretty good. 
like it's not super stretched um, or jarring or anything it's actually a pretty smooth pan transition I think it looks really good but I just know that it's gonna make me feel yucky um, so I'm going to turn it off and then I also turned on the optional undo button I know I'll need it so sometimes when you okay see now that's just I prefer that just so that I don't get motion sick so right now it's playing like this animated oh my god so in between like different parts of a scene like different areas of a scene it will switch from the game to play a pre-rendered or pre like recorded like transition of the character like walking and for some reason Ob <laughs> OBS won't record that um like it's just completely still but you can hear the footsteps and I don't know why it does that like OBS won't record it so I'm just going to right click to skip it as often as I can remember I'll probably experience like I'll probably keep it up once to see what it looks like you guys won't see it of course but then after that I'll skip it so that um, it's not just like because <laughs> that's a bit weird it's a bit peculiar but anyway moving on leave now Oliver and your son will be mine forever is that what you want? I didn't think so. They did a nice job with that. <clears throat> okay. My inventory's down here, but I haven't picked anything up yet. Nothing in there. <clears throat> Transition. The Blackstone Asylum, Blackstone Historical Society, the Blackstone Hospital for the Mentally Ill was originally the palatial home of Tycoon Charles Connolly, constructed on the same massive scale as the American castles of Vanderbilt and Rockefeller. The mansion was converted to an asylum in 1925, three years before Connolly's death. For the next 34 years, wait one second. Last time I used OBS, I was playing Lethal Company, so I had to uh, turn down my voice input because there was a lot of screaming involved. Um, so anyway, hopefully it's, it should be a little bit louder now. Um, okay, there we go. Um, for the next uh, 34 years, the property was operated as a hospital for the insane. At its peak, more than 500 inmates and staff lived on the grounds. After the hospital's board of trustees voted to close it in 1959, the building stood empty for nearly 40 years until it was purchased by the Blackstone Historical Society for use as a museum of psychiatric history. Also, this is apparently based on like a book series or a book called The Black stone chronicles by the author john saul i have never even heard of him before um or his book or anything like that and i was like crap like do i want to read the books first before i play the game and i was reading the manual um for the game and it says like there was like a letter that john saul i guess wrote for um the players and um he says you know they made sure that you didn't have to read the books like the game is its own separate thing however if you wanted to get more of the universe like if you wanted to get more of an immersive experience maybe when you're done playing the game give the book a read and i was like that's a good idea i think i'll do that did you say sean paul no i said john saul like J-O-H-N-S-A-U-L This dude <clears throat> Okay, so it's a book series I have to check that out The Mansion Years 
Charles Connolly imported craftsmen from all over the world to build his version of an English castle, which took more than 10 years to create. Perched on North Hill with a commanding view of the town of Blackstone, the main building was completed in 1908 and had more than 100 bedrooms, 60 bathrooms, and 45 fireplaces? Isn't that kind of hazardous? Holy smokes, literally. Prior to World War I, the mansion was the weekend playground of the elite of Boston society. In the 1920s, however, as Connolly's health began to fall or fail, the grounds and outbuildings fell into disrepair. An avid outdoorsman, Connolly situated his home on 1520, 1,520 acres of rolling hillside, forests, and farmland where he and his guests went horseback riding and hunting. Trophies from Connolly's older big game safari still hang in the entry hall. Okay. The mansion and grounds were ideally suited for an asylum, especially in the moral management era of psychiatric care, during which patients were encouraged to participate in a wide variety of activities ranging from crafts work to farming and light manufacturing. Oh, you mean slave labor. Gotcha. Through the years, the original mansion underwent many modifications. Wings were added to hold patient wards, although private patients from wealthier families were still quartered in the spacious bedrooms on the second floor of the main building. Many of the staff lived on the grounds as well. The superintendent's cottage, the building just to the south of the main entrance, is still occupied today by the son of the last superintendent. Okay. This building stood empty from 1959 to 1998. For most of that time, it was boarded up and in significant need of repair. A portion of the roof collapsed and the interior was heavily vandalized. In the early 1900s, a consortium of investors bought the mansion with the intent of demolishing it and building a shopping center. Demolition had, demolition had hardly begun, however, when individuals associated with the project began suffering a bizarre series of accidents. Enthusiasm for the project waned. The building's fate was not determined until the mansion was declared a National Historic Landmark and was purchased by the Blackstone Historical Society for its present use as a museum. The asylum years span the most exciting era in the history of psychiatric care, during which many amazing new techniques were developed to battle the age-old problem of mental illness. Through faithful reconstruction of patient rooms, common areas, and treatment rooms, our historians have captured the excitement of that time and the hope it represents for the future. Patient rooms are furnished with the actual belongings of the inmates who live there. Treatment rooms have original equipment in working order. Throughout, every effort has been... Throughout, every effort has been made to authentically represent the daily workings of the Blackstone Asylum. That's like fucked that's so fucked what the fuck that's fucked <laughs> all right it broke my heart <clears throat> how they let this place go to ruin it broke okay it'll never be the way it was oliver they destroyed it this is the way the entry hall looked before the blackstone historical society purchased the asylum and began our restoration program the restoration of the entry hall is now complete, although other areas of the building still remain to be restored. They did a nice... That's a couch? I liked these couches because they were comfortable, yet You're... didn't allow the patients to slouch. You're so full of shit. That looks comfortable. Um, no, it fucking doesn't. It's literally made of wood. That is a bench. That is a park bench. And there's no fucking way that that is comfortable. Shut up. Shut up, dude. Hate you already. I've never understood how people can be so cruel to animals. Wait, who's talking right now? Is it Oliver, like the guy we're playing, or is it her, his father? I thought it was his father talking to us. Leave now, Oliver, and your son will be mine forever. That's his father. Is that what you want? We're Oliver, and that's his father. I didn't think so. So why does he sound the same? I've never understood how people can be so cruel to animals. Okay. I think I just confused him with the other dude, the... The Connell, Connell, 
Charles Connolly. Because he was the one who did the hunting and stuff. I was like, what do you mean? Isn't that your... Isn't that your shit? <laughs> I just confused him, so never mind. <laughs> your grandfather was quite the hunter. I never cared for blood sports myself. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the explanation. <clears throat> I have a great admiration for Freud. He had profound insight into human behavior. That is Hippocrates, <clears throat> the father of all medicine. Oh my God, George Washington was the greatest medieval <laughs> healer of his day. Slay, George Slay. <laughs> Apparently, they're not quite ready for opening day. They're too soft, promotes poor posture. I'm dead. Yo, you better sit down on that. Do you really think you should be resting, Oliver? Oh, what an asshole. <laughs> Can't see much from here. <clears throat> Apparently they're not... Apparently... I liked the place better the old way. It broke my heart. It'll never be. So, why can I open this? Like, what's the point? Okay. Can I open this one? No, it always opens like the, the last, the left one. Okay. It sucks that I have to skip. Apparently, they're not. The um, like. Video. They're too soft. Transitions like. <clears throat> I don't want to restart. Dart. <clears throat> Moose was so plentiful, I hardly <laughs> see why shooting one was regarded as an accomplishment. Oh. Enter chapel. I added those myself. The hall was too gloomy <laughs> without them. Too gloomy. Day room. Okay, let's save. I'll delete this. <clears throat> there are time puzzles in this game. That's all I know. <clears throat> that is all that I know. Okay, cinematic. I will skip it. Try to get in the habit of telling you guys when there is one. Welcome back, Oliver. Where have you taken him, father? He's in the secret room. You know where that is, don't you? I haven't been in here for five years. You remember, Oliver? Five? That's it? You just don't want to admit it. I don't remember. Part of you remembers. Mm -hmm. You must let that part come back. I will never go back. If you <laughs> wish to rescue young Joshua, you must. You will gain control of me again. I never controlled you. You became the dark figure because you wanted to. You gave out the gifts because it was the right thing to do. It's just a hallucination. An interesting hypothesis. Incorrect, but interesting. Mm -hmm. I assure you, I am quite real. And this is not a nightmare from which you will somehow awaken. A rather good likeness, don't you think? Yes, Oliver. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I'll... Why can't you leave us alone? I cannot do that, Oliver. A parent's responsibility to his child never ends, even in death. What are you talking about? You have not <laughs> been a good boy, Oliver. Not only have you chosen to abandon my life's work, you have also refused to seek revenge upon those who cut it short. What does he have to do with it? Someone must shoulder the family burden. If you refuse the task, then I must train young Joshua, just as I once trained you. You tortured me. Rubbish. I used pain as an appropriate motivational device, <laughs> just as every parent does, except I was far more rational than most. I never hurt you in anger, Oliver. Not every father can say that. I'm dead. Bring him back. No. You must come and get him. I believe spending time in this building will remind you of how important our work is. And that it will help persuade you it must be finished. I want you to rediscover the part of you that is buried, Oliver. However, you have only until dawn. If you have not entered the secret room by daybreak, I will give up on you for good and begin to teach Joshua what it means to be born a Metcalf. Um, okay. Well, that's probably not gonna happen. So you might as well just take the damn kid, the fuck? A rather good likeness. <laughs> I can already tell you, Malcolm, I'm not going to be able to do it in time. Goddamn. The originals were Lalique Crystal, probably <laughs> too expensive to replace. You said, you have a time limit, and I said, fuck it, game over. Already. <laughs> it's game over already. You must treat the families like royalty. Of course, inmates use the back stairs. <laughs> Odd inmates. Lord of mercy. This is a transition. I play the transitions just once when I first encounter them. Elevator handle to be stored in office each evening at 6 o'clock. Okay. There seems to be something missing. The handle? <laughs> Do you think it's the handle, Oliver? In office each evening at 6 o'clock. Transition. Okay. Transition. <laughs> I don't know why OBS doesn't pick it up. To be fair, it is very artifacted. Like, it is very, very pixelated. <laughs> Those are the anatomical drawings <laughs> that accompanied the first article I ever had published. That is the score to my concerto for two clarinets. It was performed at Carnegie Hall by Jamie Scott and Victor Navorn. Some of my Harvard classmates. Between us, we had three Nobel Prize nominations. Those are gifts from colleagues all over the world. You missed out on a wonderful profession, Oliver. Those came from the fireplace in the Great Hall at Barclay Castle in England. The vases belong to your mother. That is Donatienne Alphonse, my college roommate. Why do you just have a picture of him? That's kind of weird, bro. You remember this desk, Oliver. You used to play underneath it for hours. I used to think my work would be known all over the world. Now that is up to you. Or to Joshua. 
I used to... You remember. Your mother died too soon, Oliver. But I no longer blame you and Mallory for her death. You used to? The fuck? Okay. Superintendent's office. The office of... Hold on, I'm eating something. The office of the superintendent functioned as both the research and the administrative center of the hospital. This room has been restored with the belongings of the last superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Malcolm Metcalf. That's our father. A world-renowned therapist and research scientist, Dr. Metcalf's progressive techniques were responsible for cure rates that far exceeded the national average. Although his private research notes have been lost the asylum's official patient records have been recovered and have been donated to the society by oliver metcalf dr metcalf's son that's us these records have been computerized and are available to serious researchers upon request of the museum curator <clears throat> malcolm metcalf born in 1914 dr metcalf was a prodigy who was graduated from the Sorbonne at the age of 18 and from Harvard Medical School when he was just 23. His first paper, The Psych Psychology of Psychosis, was published in 1938. He was among the first to insist that all mental illness has a physical cause and he coined the memorable phrase, to cure the mind, look first to the body. His subsequent groundbreaking study of the nervous system earned him the 1940 Loal Kabat, award and a nomination for the nobel prize for medicine an accomplished amateur mu musician he dedicated his concerto for two clarinets to the memory of his musical idol johann sebastian Bach. in 1949 he married olivia Connolly, daughter of the asylum's founder their marriage came to a tragic end in 1952 when she died giving birth to his twin son and daughter i see then, four years later, his daughter was killed in a terrible accident from which it is said her father never recovered. Dr. Metcalf died in 1959. That is so sad. What the fuck? The role of the superintendent was that of the stern, authoritarian, yet loving and concerned father. His duties were largely administrative, although Dr. Metcalf maintained a small private practice and never completely abandoned his research. The organizational tasks of running the hospital were staggering. Dr. Metcalf and his staff devised treatment plans, diets, and customized activity programs for each of the inmates. In addition, he personally supervised the building expansion and was an active fundraiser. Dr. Metcalf's reputation alone was sufficient to ensure a steady stream of well-to-do patients. Excuse me. In these years, when mental illness still bore a significant social stigma, wealthy families were more than willing to pay for the privacy and discretion for which Dr. Metcalf was has was known <clears throat> qualified researchers may apply to michael sack the curator of the museum to gain access to the asylum patient records those who do so must sign an agreement stating they will respect the privacy of the inmates and that under no circumstances will the name of any patient be published upon approval of the application a password will be issued and computer time will be assigned the museum gratefully acknowledges the families of inmates whose rooms are on display both for the donation of their personal effects and for granting permission to reveal their identities okay <clears throat> it'll do you no good oliver <clears throat> only i remember which key goes in which lock You'll spend all night trying to get through one door. The families of prospective patients were always impressed by the grounds, by the building, and by the staff. But sometimes what impressed them most of all was that old-fashioned elevator and the uniformed operator.
The elevator in the entry hall was used only by the superintendent and his special visitors. To ensure there was no unauthorized use, he had the operator's handle locked up in his office each night. In any psychiatric hospital, controlling access is of paramount importance. Each worker had only those keys that allowed him to do his job. Only the superintendent had the master set of keys to every lock in the building. There was a lot more to this place than they'll ever know. The families of prospective It'll do you no... There was... The family is a pres... The family... Transition. Der Grossen von Darsny by Paracelsus. Corollus Linnaeus, Systema Naturae. You never did enough reading as a child, Oliver. Not of the right sort, anyway. Avicenna's Canon of Medicine. The Physiology of Psychosis by Metcalf. You never did. Vesalius, De Humane Corporis Fabrica. Bro, what? <laughs> On Aphasia by Freud. What is bro saying? <laughs> <laughs> William Harvey's essay on the motion of the heart and the blood. <clears throat> Al Hawi by Al Razi. Fractures, dislocations, and wounds by Hippocrates. Yum. On the uses of the parts of the body of man by Galen of Pergamum. Hmm. You never did. Mm. You never. This, this was the standard medical textbook for over six hundred years. Damn. My own small contribution to the <laughs> body of medical knowledge. He was a book burner, but he invented chemotherapy and introduced chemistry into medicine. Der Grossen von Okay. The Corolla. The taxonomic classification he invented is still the one we use today. <clears throat> he founded the modern science of anatomy. <clears throat> His early work in neurology is much neglected. Discovered the circulation <clears throat> of the blood. Fog. Brilliant. The first mm -hmm. to identify both smallpox and measles. You got any dark romance? He <laughs> was the greatest physician in history. The father of medicine. Malcolm, uh, come on, my boy. <laughs> he added much to the knowledge of infectious disease and pharmacology. <clears throat> blah, 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 motherfucker. Damn. Operate computer transition. Please enter your password. I don't know what it is. Okay. Password. Scooter. Hmm. I sure hope they remove this before they open next week. Oh, okay. Oh. 
S C O O D E R. Enter the first and last names of the patient whose records you would like to review. Alright, it's over. Um, <laughs> I gotta come back. <clears throat> Webster's second unabridged before they started corrupting the language. Mm. What does he mean by that? Sometimes a couch is just a couch. I didn't do psychoanalysis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. The vases belong to your mother. I bought it in Persia while I was attending a medical conference. These rugs are so expensive. So expensive. Oh my gosh. Like, bro, it's a rug. <laughs> but like, also, I, like, I get it, but like, holy smokes. There was a lot more to this place. That looks... They should have known better than to hang that in here. I detested killing animals. Bro's like, I cannot believe people kill animals. Oh, but, but people? I'm fine with torture, you but remember this desk. I draw the line at torturing animals. Transition. <clears throat> that is Donatio. Okay. This is hardly the time for a pot of coffee. A pot of coffee. But I want some coffee. I think I'm gonna pour myself some, actually. It's empty. Oh. It's over. It's so over. <laughs> We're gonna talk to our mother, I think. What good are coffee cups without a pot to go with them? <clears throat> Transition. It was a gift to me from a Russian physician. Mm. It rather looks like me, don't you think? I can't even see it. All right, shove that shit that in my pocket. That was always one of your favorites. I used to crack <laughs> nuts with it when you came to play. Because it's a nutcracker. It what was else? a gift. Yes, Oliver. Wait, I can, I can talk. Wait. Wait, I can talk to him through the <laughs> the nutcracker. Okay. Okay. Sure. You remember Louisa Hartwig? <clears throat> she was the leader of the women's volunteers <laughs> here at the hospital. You remember. That was taken on your third birthday. It's you and your sister Mallory. The day you were born was the most important day of my life. Is this okay? What the fuck? Alright, that's our mom behind us. Apparently we can talk to her. Um so let's do that. Your mother died too She's not here, Oliver. She rarely came into the asylum and never formed a strong enough connection with anything to keep her spirit here. Oh. She's not here, Oliver. Oh, that's fucking sad. Never mind. Shit. This room is really pretty. I'm not like a huge fan of the colors, but... Um, I still think it's pretty. Yes. Um, okay. So I can use the elevator now, but I'm not going to use it yet. Let's go to the day room. Transition. The important thing was that they be too heavy for the inmates to lift. 
fewer injuries that way. It's bolted down, less dangerous that way. I liked these couches because restful art is part of the therapeutic process. The inmates used to sit for hours at a time, just staring. We encourage the violent inmates to take up painting. No art ever came of it, but it seemed to help calm them down. What do you mean that's not art? That's fucking incredible. I can't paint that. So damn sure. Transition. Some inmates became quite skilled in metalwork, <coughs> leather crafts, and wood carving. You may think these crafts trite, but they were very important to the patients. <coughs> Basket weaving was quite popular, especially with the psychosurgery <coughs> patients. Psychosocial. Psychosocial. Do you remember the pottery? You used to love to watch the wheels going round and round. <laughs> Dang. We have lots of memories here, apparently, as a child. Actually, we did have to lock away some of the more destructive <laughs> implements. A simple precaution. <laughs> I often worried about those exposed <laughs> hinges, but none of the inmates ever thought of removing them. Actually, we... They seem to have changed the lock. Hmm. They seem to have changed... I like the music in here. It's really pretty. Transition. Day room. While many institutions lapsed into custodial care, Blackstone prided itself on following the principles of moral management established in the 1800s. Occupational therapy, recreation, religious events, and other activities that emulated life on the outside were designed to gradually enable the patient to return to normal society. Nowhere are the results of these ideas more evident than here in the day room, which became the focus of many patients' lives. Here they played games and worked on their crafts. Some of the craft circles became so skillful that in time they became known as quality producers of goods. The leather work working group became particularly famous and a blackstone belt is still a prized possession. Occupational therapy was typically assigned along gender lines. The men worked in the fields or in the gardens. They did light manufacturing work and helped with the maintenance of the buildings and the hospital's mechanical equipment. Women typically worked as housekeepers, seamstresses, or in the kitchens. The kitchen that adjoins this room is not part of the museum exhibit area as it is in active use for events held in the museum after hours. It is hoped that one of the other larger kitchens will be opened in phase two of the museum's renovation along with several of the patient wards. <clears throat> the daily schedule. Establishing a regular daily routine was regarded as key to patients' recoveries because it created the framework in which they could begin to see themselves once again as normal people leading normal lives. Everyone arose at 6 o'clock. Inmates were required to make their own beds prior to breakfast. After breakfast, the doctors made their rounds, prescribing medicine or other treatments and activities. The remainder of the morning was given over to occupational therapy. The period after lunch was devoted to exercise, games, and other amusements. On most days, the evening meal was also followed by an organized entertainment, which usually took place here in the day room. Cool. I always <laughs> tried to keep the patients busy. Nasty looking weapon, isn't <clears throat> it? I always... A thin punch like that <laughs> was perfect for making holes in leather. 
I always... This is a swivel <laughs> knife used to slice leather. <laughs> it is a myth that sharp objects had to be withheld from all patients. Some mental illnesses pose no threat to the patient or his fellow inmates. The awl was used by inmates working on leather crafts. Musicians. I'm gonna look at the... There's like a menu. But it won't let me... Do it. Nope. Restful <laughs> art is part of the therapeutic process. <laughs> I really, really like the music in here. A lot, a lot, a lot. Can I use this and this? Probably not. I guess not. Transition. The kitchen has its own set of circuits. <laughs> Transition. Jeez, looks like Thomas Edison <laughs> built it himself. <laughs> <The fuck? clears throat> looks fine to me. <clears throat> Doesn't budge. <clears throat> doesn't feel cold at all. Closed transition. <laughs> it hasn't been recharged in years. The fire department will crucify them at final <laughs> inspection. <laughs> it's worthless, Oliver. It's deader than I am. Hmm. Our menus were meticulously planned by trained dietitians. I suspect the patients didn't appreciate the effort we put into keeping them on a healthy diet. That's tough. Is that my reflection? My big ass head, bruh. These ovens could turn out <laughs> over a thousand meals a day. Cuts down on injuries, mm -hmm. keeps people from slipping. The inmates did a surprising amount of the cooking. Therapeutic and mm -hmm. cost effective at the mm -hmm. same time. Fuck. Did you know lobsters used to be so plentiful and cheap that railroad workers ate them three meals a day? They got so sick of them, they went on strike for the right not to be fed lobsters. Is that true? That's interesting. I've never heard that before. Transition. Did you know... You'd be surprised at the edge you can put on a knife with one of these. Hmm. Only women did the cooking. The men would use the pans as weapons. What the fuck? Did you know? <clears throat> An essential tool for handling boiling <clears throat> lobsters. Soup was always a questionable meal. It had a good chance of ending up on the walls. <clears throat> Jesus. Oh, leave it be, Oliver. Stop fidgeting about. <clears throat> Only women did the... Okay. We kept ordinary supplies in there. I don't know <coughs> what the new people plan to do. We ran off our own wells. Purest <coughs> water you could ever imagine. We ran off... This was just for spot cleaning. The automatic dishwashers <laughs> are around behind the freezer.
there. Much sharper now. I'm gonna have to do it again. Okay. <clears throat> we kept on. It's locked. The key's not on that ring. It's a new lock. Oh my god. I thought I taught you better than to waste water. I thought I taught. Okay, bro. Damn. It's freaking leaking. The inmates did a. We use these <laughs> for making shish kebabs. <laughs> shish kebabs. I love to shish and I love to this kebab. Was just you know, on a good day, at least. I can't go over there? It's weird. That's so peculiar. Okay. <clears throat> the kitchen. No point in doing that. Yes, Oliver. Okay. I guess we'll come back. Go to the it's chapel. Locked. Fuck. I don't have time to try all these keys. You, you could. You totes could, dude. Coward. Cowardice. Cowardice. Okay. This is to the okay. Okay. Let's use the elevator then. Elevator. <clears throat> The family is a okay. Push to two, push to B. Let's go to the basement first. Oh, you guys don't get to see this transition. We're in an elevator and it's going down and it's opening. Very weird that you guys, it like OBS doesn't pick up on the transitions. I wish it did. <clears throat> I mean, you're not missing like a lot, but it would still be nice. That's all. Every moment you waste, <laughs> your son comes closer to being mine. Okay, bro. What the hell? They seem really solid. Hydrotherapy? Oi. Oi, yeah. Uh... It's locked. Oh. It's locked. Enter morgue. Oh, it's so over. Fuck. <clears throat> it's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Fuck. Some stains stay with us always, no matter how <laughs> we may try to scrub them out. Oof, ain't that the truth? It's locked. Fuck. <laughs> it's locked. God damn it. It's locked. How could this happen? I guess we can't do anything in the basement right now. Bah humbug. Alright, I'll come back. Sheesh. The family. Okay, push it to two. <clears throat> okay. What on earth? Women's wing. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Wait, this is where I came from. Okay. Oh. It's dark in here, Dad. It'll be okay, Josh. You've got Freddy with you, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, hang on to him. He'll keep you company until I get there. Okay. Hello? Is someone there? Who are you? I'm Marilyn Wilson. This is my room. Or at least it is until I have my baby. I'm due any day now. I'm very happy for you. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Marilyn Wilson? Mom and Dad let me bring it from home. The big one's Tommy, and the little one's Teresa. I snuggle them every night. Hey, I'm in enough trouble already. That's little Teresa. After she's born, she'll sleep in the bassinet. <clears throat> what are you looking for? Ghosts? Come on, leave that alone. I have to make that bed myself. Who the fuck is talking to me, bro? Do you like it? I picked it out myself. I keep them closed at night, just in case someone is watching from the woods. Hey, don't do that. It's cold enough in here already. I know they're ugly, but that doesn't mean you can just rip them down. Why not? That's for the baby. I can't wait until she's born. You know, I do that sometimes. Oh, no, you don't. That stays right here until Teresa comes. Why do they make you wear those things? <laughs> they look so goofy. Hi. Thanks for coming to visit me. Have you seen my cigarette lighter? Why? Is yours missing? <laughs> yes. It was a present from my sister. You'd recognize it right away. It's shaped like a really neat dragon. I'd be really grateful if you could find it for me. Tell me about the baby. She'll be born real soon. I say she, although I really don't know yet. But I'm hoping for a girl. <clears throat> Aren't you a little young to be having a baby? Yeah, I know. My parents are furious. That's why they put me in here. But when Tommy gets back, we'll get married and then everything will be okay. Oi. Is he any older than you? Tommy Gardner. He's my fiancé. He'll be 19 in November. Jesus, if... If you're young and Tommy's 19... Ugh. Why isn't he around to help? He's in Korea. Oh! That's his picture with his army buddies on the bulletin board. Um, girl. Girl, I hate to break it to you. Um... Never mind. Stealing from a pregnant woman? Some guy you are. Hey, I'm a girl, lady. It'll never fit. Not in a million years. Damn, she called me Big Head. That's me with my two sisters, Martha and Margaret. With me named Marilyn, that makes three M's. We call ourselves the Three Musketeers. That's Tommy with his army buddies in Korea. <coughs> Isn't he cute? Mm, yeah, he's That's a looker. That's mom and dad. They're mad at me right now, but I think they'll change when they get to hold their new granddaughter. They're a gag gift from my girlfriend. <laughs> no baby's feet could be that small. Besides, they're blue, and I'm going to have a girl. Well, well, yeah, duh. You can't possibly have blue booties for a girl. That would just be preposterous. That would be which behavior you would be burned for that. Graduating from high school was the happiest day of my life. Real. <laughs> With all the money my parents are spending, you'd think they could spring for more than just one lamp. Transition. <clears throat> I just took that shit. <clears throat> Can I read? Oh, God. Dear Diary, I have started writing to you so that after Teresa is born, I will be able to remember all the interesting things that happened to me here. This is the strangest place I've ever been. I've heard about it all my life. 
Parents in Blackstone always threaten their children with being sent away to the asylum. Uh, asylum on the hill. Something on the hill. Um, but now that I'm inside, it doesn't seem so bad. Maybe when I get out, I'll write an article for the Chronicle about it. Dear Diary, I think it's a sh it's strange that the nicest people here are the inmates that are... That surprised me. I expected the doctors and nurses to care more about the patients, but they're so busy they hardly have the time. The people... <coughs> excuse me. Who really run the asylum are the attendants um we only see a real doctor once each week the attendants are the ones who make the rules and everyone is very careful not to get them mad because you can end <coughs> you can end up in the hydra or solitary or even worse <clears throat> dear diary today dr metcalf himself came to visit me he is a very famous man who has gifts from other famous people all over the world like the stuff on his mantelpiece and the nutcracker he he keeps in his desk drawer Dr. Metcalf told me that I was very sick. I told him I felt fine, but he just shook his head. He said tomorrow he was going to take me down to the furnace room in the basement, which is pretty strange because I've never heard of a patient going in there for treatment. Oh well, we'll see what tomorrow brings. I'll be sure to write you at the end of the day. Mm, the pages are stuck together. Um, what the fuck? He told me I needed to learn the difference between fantasy and reality and then he threw the book right into the furnace. I couldn't believe it. He would do some. I couldn't believe he would do something so mean. I got so mad. I started to cry. He seemed happy that I was crying. Okay. He said it meant I was more connected to reality. Uh, I take back what I said before about this place being not so bad. I want to go home. Dear Diary, I told you yesterday how Dr. Metcalf took me down to the furnace room and the horrible thing he did there. Well, today he took me down there again, only this time it was my baby. It was my baby blanket. I had saved it since I was a baby and I was going to give it to Teresa. Now I don't have it anymore. Now I don't. Now I don't. Now I don't know what to do. Tommy's in Korea and my parents won't talk to me. The only visitor I've had is Martha and she had to sneak out of the house to see me. She thought the nicest. She thought she brought the nicest. Uh, what the fuck is that? She brought the nicest present it's a cigarette lighter yeah what the fuck it's a cigarette lighter um shaped like a dragon i'm very lonely dear diary i've been talking with some of the other inmates and things aren't as nice here as i thought they were going to be as i thought they were at the beginning I thought everyone had their own room, but that isn't so. Some, some 
are some what some wards are so grounded crowded some wards are so crowded you could walk on the beds from one end of the room to the other without even without ever touching the floor i've also learned that dr metcalf is mean to more people than just me tommy hasn't written me a single letter good evening pierre hello booger boy booger booger boogar burger sorry you're not booger boy you're burger boy. i'm so sorry <laughs> hello and hi pierre i'm okay how are you doing Dear Diary, this is the last day I will be writing you. I've decided I don't really want to remember the things that are happening here. After Teresa is born, I will take her and leave this place and never think about it again. I don't think anyone will ever understand how horrible this place is. Thank you for being here. You've been a real comfort. Maybe one day I'll write to you again, but it wasn't... It won't be until I have left this place far behind. Yours truly, Marilyn Wilson. Jesus Christ. Right. I didn't mean to, bro. I just said it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Ew, how'd that get here? I hate that picture. Do you like it? Before we talk to her. Okay. Marilyn Wilson was involuntarily committed by her parents when she began complaining of symptoms typical of pregnancy. She was not pregnant, but suffered instead from pseudosiasis or false pregnancy, a psychosomatic disorder. Oh. Honey. After her admission, she became clinically depressed and eventually slipped into ca catatonia, a state in which the patient does not move and is oblivious to external stimulation. As was typical of patients from wealthier families, her family spared no expense to decorate this private room in a style that would make her feel more secure and comfortable. Psychosomatic disorders arise when psychological stress adversely affects the body's function. Sometimes the patient experiences the physical symptoms without ever becoming aware of the psychological state that gave rise to the dysfunction. In this case, doctors believe that Ms. Wilson became traumatized with worry about a classmate involved in the Korean War and believed that if she was pregnant, he would be discharged to come home and marry her, thereby ensuring his safety. Treatment for these disorders usually involve hydrotherapy and other relaxing therapies to relieve the underlying psychological stress. In Miss Wilson's case, this treatment was this treatment plan was not effective. Pseudosiasis. An illness that mimics the symptoms of pregnancy, including a swollen stomach, morning sickness, and even labor pains. False pregnancy most of most often occurs. And young women who so desperately desire a child that their bodies respond accordingly, although no conception has actually taken place. Women prone to pseudosiasis are more insecure than the general population. They frequently display memory blanks and are inclined to exotic beliefs such as an ESP or alien intelligence. The condition may disappear with therapy or degenerate into a severe depressive illness, which is what happened in this case. Depression. An emotional state marked by prolonged sadness, inactivity, and the loss of the ability to enjoy life. It is more common in women than in men. Often, other symptoms include loss of appetite, sleep disturbances, apathy, morbid preoccupation with worthlessness, and suicidal tendencies. Patients are, most, patients are likely to complain of feelings of intense hopelessness and helplessness. Long regarded as a purely mental problem, it is now known that depression has its basis in chemical imbalances in the brain. Sadly, in the 1950s, antidepressant drugs had not yet been developed and treatment options were limited. Catatonic schizophrenia. 
is a severe disorder in which the patient neither moves nor talks. Her muscles become rigid, she remains in one posture, and she becomes completely withdrawn, ignoring all external stimuli. The patient may remain in this state for extended periods of time, requiring her to be involuntarily bathed and fed. Roughly one-third of patients suffering from this illness recover completely. Another third have occasional reoccurrences. The remainder deteriorate into chronic schizophrenia, many of them dying by suicide. Prognosis is worse for younger patients, especially those who lack a supporting network of family and friends. Oh, this is so fucking sad. Jesus Christ. This is so- This is horrible. I don't have a clue what that is. Somebody must have moved it in here while I was sleeping. Patients were allowed to keep personal possessions of special significance to them. This cigarette lighter was a gift of Marilyn Wilson's younger sister, Martha. I've read it a hundred times, but I've decided to name her Teresa. That's a good name for someone whose daddy is named Tommy. Doctors sometimes allowed patients to keep items that reinforce their fantasies. According to her medical records, Marilyn Wilson spent hour after hour absorbed in this book of baby names, even though she wasn't pregnant. I don't have a clue what that is. Sure, you can have it. No, wait. I I'd like to look through it one more time. Sure, you. Okay. Yeah, that was sad as fuck. <clears throat> Guess we should talk to her. Hello again. But I'm still looking. Thanks. His name is Joshua. Have you seen him? Sorry, no. I've read that the doctors don't believe you're going to have a baby. Don't be silly. Why did you start writing everything down? It was more of a journal, actually. When I first got here, I wanted to write a story about the asylum. But then I got so excited about the baby that I haven't written in it for a long time. You can read it if you want. I like the diary. You're a good writer. Thanks. For a long time, I wanted to be a reporter. But now I just want to stay home with the baby when she's born. What's it really like to be here? It's weird. There's this strange combination of being all alone, yet you're living in a building full of other people. The patients are mostly nice, actually. It's the attendants who act strange, isn't that odd? But the thing I miss most is my privacy. How can you feel alone with so many people around? I miss my family. My parents told my sisters they can't visit, and Tommy is in Korea. The other That's patients terrible. here are nice. But I don't really know them. Her sisters can't even fucking visit her. You've got your own room. Isn't that private enough? Well, <laughs> first of all, everyone on the staff gets to look at all my records. I can understand that because they might need to know something about my medicine or something. But they go way beyond that. Yeah. I think they want to make sure I'm not secretly talking with Tommy. Do you believe it? They even steam open my mail. Jesus. Why do you say they act strangely? Actually, it's both the doctors and the attendants. They act as if the people here aren't really people. They don't listen. They treat the patients like children. It's like as soon as someone is labeled crazy, they don't count anymore. But a lot of the inmates here aren't really all that nuts. Or even if they are, they still deserve respect. I'm sorry. I shouldn't go on like that. It just makes me angry is all. No, girl, you're valid. Two of the diary pages seem to be stuck together. Can you tell me what's on the second page? Sorry, I really don't remember. Tell me about the medical treatments. Mostly they take me down to the hydrotherapy room. I can always tell when they're taking me there because the attendant gets out that big gray key that opens the door. Right now, I don't remember anything about what happens in there. Uh, but that's okay. I'd rather think about the baby. Big gray key. Thank you, Marilyn. 
Um, all right, I'm gonna save. Hello again. It's what the doctors call pseudosiesis. Yes, but that doesn't apply to me. I'm really having a baby. Maybe you just want to believe you're going to have a baby. That's ridiculous. Why would I choose to make my parents mad at me and let them lock me up away from all my friends? Whoever told you that is lying. Damn. But I'm still... Thanks. Okay. Hello again. Okay, let's leave. Okay. Can I take one of your teddy bears? No. Alright. Let's go to this one. Just kidding, I don't think I can. What the hell? Okay. Understand. Oh, so I can only go in there. Yeah, these other doors are not open. It's locked. <clears throat> What the hell? I don't have time to- <laughs> Okay, fuck. Let's turn around. Um... It's locked. Men's wing is locked? What the hell? Okay, let's go to... Um... Um... One. Yes. Why did you take it? Are you sure I took it? Are you certain it wasn't you? Perhaps the museum people simply haven't placed it there yet. Where did you hide it? Oh, Oliver. You forget my goal. I want you to explore the asylum, to rekindle your old memories. Even if I did take the lighter, I would scarcely tell you where it is. Did she really have a baby? Marilyn was a very sick girl. You must remember that when you speak with her. Are you a detective? No. No, I'm the... I'm the so okay, so the guy that we're looking at right now is our father, right? Um, Malcolm Metcalf is his name, and he was the owner. Was he the owner? He wasn't the owner. He was a, like, therapist, and, like, one of the people that worked at this asylum. And so us, we're... Oliver Metcalf, his son, we spent a lot of time here as a child because our father worked here. Um, I think so. Maybe you're just a figment of my imagination. It hardly <laughs> matters, does it? If you are making this up, you have certainly <laughs> gone insane. Yet if I am a ghost, then your rational world view has developed a few cracks. Quite a problem, isn't it? Apparently, so, our father... Okay, yeah, so, the guy that owned this place is our grandfather. This is our father. And so I think he did own it. Um, and he... Or wait. I think our did our grandmother I don't know we're, we're related in some capacity and anyway our grandfather or our father this dude even though he's dead question mark um he like kidnapped our kid so now we have to like do his bidding or some shit. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's fucking bizarre. Your mother died. She's not here. All right. <clears throat> so 
Let's enter the first and last names of the patients whose records you would like to review. Marilyn. Whoops. I think the keyboard very cool. Marilyn. Marilyn. <laughs> Wilson. Um, Michael Wilson, father. Pseudo Saesis. She was pregnant. She was not. Hydrotherapy. Reason for discharge. Deceased. Suicide. Oh, fuck's sake. This case is unusual in that the patient continued to believe she had given birth even after the symptoms of pregnancy disappeared. It was believed she was making progress, however, right up until the time of her death. Wait. No, I wanna... Is that it? Press any key to continue. Fuck. She killed herself. Marilyn, I'm so sorry, honey. <clears throat> hmm, the pages are stuck together. Hmm. Hmm. The pages are stuck together. I don't know if there's anything I can do to change that. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Fuck. Okay, get me out. Get me out. Get the, f get me the fuck out of here. Oy, oy, oy. It's locked. Hello again. Hmm. Why do you say they act strange? Actually, it's both the doctors and how can you okay. feel? I'm I don't know. Yes, Oliver. Okay. Do you like? Hands off, Mister. He's mine. Come on, leave her alone. <clears throat> There's nothing. With all the. Oi. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I go downstairs to the basement. It's locked. What the fuck is it? Oh my god. Okay. No. Go to the- no. Go to the basement. And then the hydro, whatever the fuck. Oh, okay. So it automatically opens it now that we know what key it uses. Hello? Hello. My name is Jane. Who are you? My name is Oliver. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Although the circumstances aren't very pleasant. We were really very sick. 
they were only trying to help. The wrist restraints were used to ensure the patients didn't harm themselves when in the tub or while using other equipment. Although they may have caused some discomfort, they were there for the good of the patients. I hated them. They made me feel like a prisoner. We were really very sick. Nothing good could come from that. Jet nozzles allowed therapists to stimulate specific body parts with a high-speed flow of water. What you take fuck? off your clothes and they shoot this water at you. It really stung. Jesus Christ. Especially if they just kept spraying in one spot. What the fuck? Please leave them where they are. They've caused enough misery. Nothing could... Okay. Hydrotherapy. From ancient times, drinking and bathing in thermal springs has been an effective therapeutic activity, spawning the development of spa towns all over the world where people travel to take the waters. Hydrotherapy is the modern descendant of this activity and has expanded to include such diverse forms of water treatment as soothing baths, invigorating jets of water, wet packs, steam boxes, and saunas. In the therapeutic environment, the primary purpose of hydrotherapy is to control the body's temperature, either raising it or lowering it according to the demands of the treatment plan. The treatments also had the beneficial side effect of improving circulation. Tubs. Cold baths decrease the body's temperature, causing blood vessels to close and reducing blood flow. They were generally prescribed to calm nervous irritability. The tubs you see here were large enough for patients to completely submerge themselves in the water. The wooden lids help keep the water temperature constant. Steam baths. Steam heat relieves pain and improves circulation. It induces a relaxed state of rest, which makes it a valuable therapy for agitated and hyperactive patients. That's me. The heat causes an increase in metabolic rate and pulse. Blood vessels expand and more blood reaches the ex ex extremities. After emerging from the chamber, subjects are generally more relaxed, having have a lowered heart rate and lower blood pressure. Saunas. Precursor of the modern sauna, the dry heat chamber you see here was designed to remove toxins from the body. Through perspiration, the heat opened the pores of the skin and the patient's sweat flushed impurities from his system. The chamber was also used as a primitive sensory depri deprivation device. Patients were enclosed for extended periods to remove the excessive external, external stimuli that were believed to bring on manic episodes. Wet packs. Cold cloth compresses, compresses were effective in reducing headaches, relaxing muscle spasms, and reducing body heat in patients with high fevers. Contemporary research also indicated that inducing hypothermia brought periods of mental clarity to mute aggressive, combative, and uncooperative patients. Other pack methods include wrapping the patient in rubber sheets before immersing them in the cold bath. This practice was made much more efficient with the introduction of the thermo right blanket, more popularly known as a mummy bag. The patient was sealed inside the bag and a refrigerant was then circulated through it, achieving a much swifter decline in body temperature. Jesus fucking Christ. All of this sounds fucking horrible. My God. I used to stare up at that window for hours, wondering what was happening outside. It can't be opened, you know. You're trapped in here like the rest of us. Christ. Epsom salts. But you had to bribe the attendants to use them. They wrapped us in those rubber sheets for hours at a time. Those are massage oils. But I never heard of an inmate getting a massage. Epsom salts. We were supposed to put our personal belongings on the shelves while we were in Hydro, but sometimes they disappeared, so no one did. Wow. I think they stocked the shelves just for show. Jesus Christ. We were supposed...
Please leave it on. The dark is so lonely. Once it's locked down, there's no getting out. Jesus fuck. There was a secret code that they used to turn the machines on and off. They never let me see what it was. Mm -mm. There was a... Mm -mm. Once a week they made us clean out the drains. It was disgusting work. Mm -mm. You can't imagine what it feels like to be locked up in there. It's dark, it's hot, and you can't get out. Fucking evil, dude. This is so unbelievably fucking evil. We scrub those walls every day. But you cannot scrub away the smell of fear. I did not realize what this game... Like, I didn't really read what this game was about. I just saw it was like an older point and click. I was like, hell yeah. Sign me up. Well, what the fuck? They'd keep us in there for hours at a time. But it never seemed to help much. They'd keep us in. It's all very confusing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what everything does. <clears throat> there was a secret. Oops. We sc There was a secret. Hmm. Nothing's happening. I didn't even mean to do that. I'm trying to fucking get over here. We scrub. All right. You can't imagine what it feels. Okay, Jane Bestie. Fuck. <clears throat> Must be some trick to it. Yes? Were you sick? I'm not sure. I, I became confused. <clears throat> I think life outside became too overwhelming for me. Real. I believe they called it a nervous breakdown. Oh, girl, that's normal, the fuck? I mean, is it important to you in some <clears throat> way? <clears throat> Why can I talk to you when I'm looking at it? I don't know. Except I have a deadly fear of being trapped inside. Maybe that's it. What did you talk about? Oh, yes. All we ever talked about was going home. It was the guiding star. The beacon ahead. The goal for which we existed. Home. We talked about it constantly, endlessly. Every day we woke up wondering if that day would be the day. Even a criminal knows when he's going to get out. But we were in prison with no release date. With only the hope of one day returning to our husbands and children. What was it like? It was... harsh. I suppose there was something wrong with us. And they were only trying to help. But God. it was very difficult. I don't believe anyone outside really knows what happens in these institutions yeah i suppose they're better off not knowing jesus christ what finally happened to you oh i finally <clears throat> got to go home i don't remember much about that anymore but i do know that it made me very very happy hmm no because you're dead so i don't think you got to go home bestie I really don't think you got to go home. There was a secret. There was a A secret code? There was a secret code that they used to turn the machines <clears throat> on and off. And it's all very confusing. We scrubbed those.
there was a Hmm. <clears throat> there was a <clears throat> Once it's locked, it's so heavy, it used to take two attendants to lift it. Please don't. It brings back too many horrible memories. It's so heavy. You'll never be able to lift that lid by yourself. Yes, Olive. Oi. Hmm. Heavier than it looks. <clears throat> and, and, um... Malcolm Metcalf? Mm -mm. Nothing in there. How could anyone remember what all these keys go to? It's empty. It was a gift to me from a Russian physician. Sharp as a razor. A thin punch like that was perfect for making holes in leather. I wish I had a pair like this for my grill. Long and sharp. These could hurt someone if you weren't careful. <clears throat> it's heavier than it looks. Mm, you'll never... It's so... <clears throat> it's locked. Some stains. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Hmm. It's locked. It's locked. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yes. I don't have her. Her last name, Jane. Oi. <clears throat> what the fuck? What good are co It was a gift. The vases belong to that is the there was Can't see. Can't see. It'll never be. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> I 
What the fuck? What the hell? <clears throat> Nothing in. <clears throat> we encourage the no point in Jeez. Doesn't feel. We kept ordinary supply. The keys not. seem to have Why open this bitch? What the fuck? It's locked. I don't have time. Oi. Them. Yes, I'm. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <clears throat> Thank you, phone. Very cool. They seemed Bruh. Looks like they cleaned it out. Looks like they Looks like they cleaned it out. Not much good without a blade. Th 
that can't be working. We kept on. We kept on. I wonder why they call them monkey wrenches. Hey. Mm. Hey. What the fuck? Lucky the whole place didn't burn down. I remember now. They killed my baby. Then I killed myself. How can I be dead and still talking to you? I don't understand. Oh. What happened to Teresa? They took her from me as soon as she was born. They wouldn't even let me hold her. And then they... They... They burned her. Do you have any idea what happened to your cigarette lighter? Dr. Metcalf took it. He did it to torment me because he knows it reminds me of my sister. I hate him. It's the only thing I have left. Please find it for me. Please? 
Dr. Metcalf has kidnapped my son. Do you have any idea where he could be? I'm sorry. We've both lost children to that man. I wish I could tell you not to worry, but I can't. Your records say you were making this all up. It's a lie. My family is trying to cover it all up so they won't be disgraced, and Dr. Metcalf is in on it. But my Teresa was born, and she was beautiful. And then he killed her. Tell me about the treatments you received. It was horrible. They acted like it was no big deal, but they never went through it. They used them at spas. I thought they were supposed to be refreshing. At a spa, you can get out when you want to. They locked us in those boxes for hours. First you get hot, and then you get dizzy. Pretty soon you're delirious. And afterwards, you're so weak, you can't even walk by yourself. Was that bad, too? First of all, it's dark in there. If you have claustrophobia, it's a nightmare. And second, you can't open it from the inside. If they forget you're in there, you could die. I know it happened more than once. What were they used for? They'd force us into the tubs and then strap heavy wooden lids over the top with a hole so only your head stuck out. Then they ran ice cold water in the tub, the hydra we called it. For the first half hour, you hurt all over. After that, you got numb. Then you went into shock. But in part of your head, you knew you still wanted to get out more than anything else in the world. Jesus Christ. Do you know anything about that control panel next to the steam boxes? The code was supposed to be secret, but that was a joke. They never changed it. All they ever did was flip the second and third switches from the top to on, and then everything would work. Oh, hello. I never thought I looked good in that picture. I wish they used a different one. I always wanted to have a baby shower, but those booties are the only present Teresa ever got. She's all alone now, with no one to take care of her. Tommy won it at the fair. That was before he stopped loving me. I used to lie in bed and stare at it, dreaming of the day little Teresa would be born. Little did I know. Teresa's gone. What's the point? Please don't. If you're cold, that won't help. The damp here creeps into your bones. Don't do that. Dr. Metcalf might punish me. It's locked. It's locked.
still very confused. It's all very confusing. I think there are monsters down here. Freddy will scare away the monsters, Josh. Just like he always does. He's a good watchdog. It's working. Dear diary today, Dr. Metcalf took me down to the furnace room, just like he said he would. He unlocked the door with a key, the big square head, and took me inside. Somehow he had gotten a hold of my high school yearbook, the one with the signatures of all my friends in it. He told me I needed to learn the difference between fantasy and reality. And then he threw the book right into the furnace. <clears throat> I want to go home. <clears throat> yes? <clears throat> um, the furnace room. No, it's not it. Just the furnace room? Yes. Can I help you, lad? <clears throat> who the fuck? What are you doing here? I'm just an old Irishman who left home looking for a better life. <clears throat> it's true I didn't starve. But I'm not sure I found what I was looking for. What do you think of it? It is a hard place, lad. And there's not much difference between the people inside and the ones outside who are walking around breathing God's fresh air. And if I were one of those people, free and easy and doing what I pleased, it would scare me senseless to know that. Who keeps things running? Oh, the new lad. The one they have here now. He's doing fine. They'll not be missing old Seamus O'Rourke. Why don't you leave? <laughs> One day they'll come in and replace all this old machinery. Then it'll be time for me to move <laughs> on. Manny's the hour I rested my old bones there. Get along with you. Find your own place to sit down. Leave that be. I like it there. They're old and abandoned, just like me. 
Don't go poking your nose where it doesn't belong. There's nothing in there that concerns you. I'm surprised at how little the light bulb has changed after all these years. Roofing nails. Lord knows we went through enough of them. Ten penny nails. Good for knocking together two by fours. I'm surprised at... It's just odd bits the new man found lying about and didn't want to throw away. Smart lad, that. Waste not, want not. Those would be your number three fuses. Industrial. We use them for most of the heavy equipment. Now be careful with that now. Don't hurt yourself. It's just odd bits the new man it only looks like clutter. I know where everything is. That's me old lightweight motor oil. It's amazing how long machines will work for you. All you have to do is take care of them. A temperamental old cow she is. She'd break down in an instant if you turn your back on her. I could build anything I could. Whatever they needed around here, I used to make it myself, right at this bench. And how far do you think you'd get in this place with no power? They certainly don't make them like that anymore. I welded them on myself. The building will come down around us before those hinges come off. It's bolted shut. Hot! It was the old man put it in there. I could see from the look in his eye he was up to no good. Perhaps you were never aware, Oliver, that some items carry evil within themselves. Merely picking up that dragon lighter, for example, has caused you to fall under its fiery spell. Marilyn Wilson burned herself to death with it. Martha Ward used it to burn her house down. Even now, it is propelling you towards some unknown, but no doubt, searing fate. I wonder, Oliver. Will you be able to take the heat? So you guys couldn't see what happened there. But basically, I walked my stupid ass all the way back to the... Oh my god, shut up. Basically, I'm fucked. Yeah. I walked my ass to the room with Jane and I got in the sink. Degrees. The patient what? suffers heat cramps from the loss of fluid in his muscles. What the hell? All right, there we go. Better dead than red. Hmm. As the temperature rises, blood... Very clever, Oliver. Well done. What the hell? Yeah, I picked this up and it was like, oh, bada bing, bada boom, and then it's he beautiful. walked all the way over here, and then he got inside this thing. Like, what the hell are you doing, Oliver? Stop fucking about, you stupid, dumb idiot. It's so heavy. I hate you, Oliver. Fight me. Yes? Oliver, we're gonna, f we're gonna scrap. You couldn't see it, because it was doing the pre-recorded thing, but that's what it was doing. 
Ah, you'll go daft, lad, if you try to figure out where all those pipes go. <clears throat> Leave that to an old expert like me. That's a new one, that is. You won't find a key for it on that big ring of yours. Mm. Careful, lad. <coughs> Water and electricity don't mix. Something must be wrong upstairs. I'm sure everything's fine. The shock would knock your eye teeth out. <laughs> Better turn off that water first. Oh, but I'm having so much fun fucking about. Hardly enough hot water to do the dishes. <coughs> but Malcolm wouldn't permit me to put in more <coughs> capacity. Cold showers are good for the patients, <coughs> he used to say. Fruit loop. Hardly a. <coughs> <laughs> Old reliable, that one. Not like that <laughs> salvage <laughs> generator. Probably. Empty. We shut down the oil burner years ago. <clears throat> oi, oi, oi. You're done playing with fire, lad. <laughs> now move on and save that boy of yours. How do you even know that? What? Like what the fuck? It's an old coal. How do you even know? Can I help you? How do you? I didn't even mention him. How could you possibly know that? You freak. All right. <clears throat> Yes, Oliver? Oh. Your diary says that Dr. Metcalf used to take you into mm -hmm. the utility room. Why? That's where he would burn the things that belonged to me. The things I cared about. He said it would help make me feel better. But he was lying. He was just being cruel. Everything that was ever precious to me, he put into that furnace. Jesus. It's beautiful. Thank you. Don't mention it. Joshua is being held there. Can you help me find it? I'm afraid I don't know too much about the asylum layout. I was only here a short time before I died. But the women down the hall might be able to help you, if you can get them to make sense. They're a little... crazy. <laughs> the key to the corridor door had a big W stamped on it. It's sure to be on your key ring, so you should be able to open it right up. Nice. Please leave it. Thank you for... Thank you for returning the lighter. Thank you for bringing it back... Thank you for bringing it back to me. Now I can rest in peace. Can I take it? After all that, <laughs> how can you even think of taking it? Dude, I need to borrow it. Come on. Thank you. That key opens it right up. It's locked. Are there bad guys here, Dad? Nope, no bad guys. I don't know, I motherfucker. Love you, Dad. I love you too, Josh. You there. You're new. Did you bring my knitting needles? Uh, I'm afraid not. Well then, 
be off with you. The tapestries are delicate. Please do not disturb them. Yes? I don't believe we've been introduced. Such impertinence in a servant. I shall have Sir George reprimand you. Who's he? He is my host, if you can call it that. What would you do with them? A servant does not question the commands of a queen. Fetch them, please. You are dismissed. That is where my handkerchief belongs. Ms. Willoughby was an accomplished seamstress, embroiderer, and weaver, as witnessed by the beautiful tapestries around the wall and the exquisite handkerchief you see here. This is the room of Lavinia Willoughby, whom the staff called Vi. She was severely delusional and believed she was Mary, Queen of Scots. Her God, family indulged her in this delusion so and paid for the special furnishings you see here. The likeness is remarkable. I have never known a painter to have such skill. What happened to your last pair? They were taken from me by Sir George. Actually, they weren't proper knitting needles at all. They were curious eating sticks from the Orient. They work just as well. In captivity, one must improvise. Curious eating sticks. I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna call chopsticks that from now on. What will you do with them? It is how I pass the time. All the needlepoint and tapestries you see around you, I made them. It must have taken quite some time. I've been here 18 years. Holy fuck. What the fuck? Have you seen my son? His name is Joshua. I am sorry your boy is missing. I too miss the companionship of my son. But perhaps you will find the lad while you are searching for my needles. You may go now. All right, I'm gonna end my stream. Thank you for watching. I know it was only two and a half hours, but it's late. I would like to be up during the day, if possible.